Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am excited as always about this video. This is a new one for me. This is my first sort of get ready with me where I talk a bit about myself, about a fun time in my life, that time I moved to Barcelona. So if you want to hear about that and if you want to check out the new Charlotte Tilbury's Magic Away Concealer and the Magic Powder, keep watching. But first up, as always, I'm Brie and I'm the owner of Breezy Tea along with my husband and we make hair products that fight frizz, lock in moisture, and protect your hair with style. I'm wearing one of our extra large satin and Ankara bonnets. If you can see, we've got some fuchsia satin going on underneath this one. I love it to do my makeup because it just keeps all my hair out my face. And at night, it's keeping my natural hair protected from a breakage, from split ends, and it's locking in moisture. And I am someone whose hair needs moisture. It's something it craves a lot of, so I love me an extra large satin bonnet. And if you wanna check them out, just visit us at breezyt.com. So I'm gonna use my camera as a mirror for some parts. First up is Tatcha's Silk Canvas, which is my primer. I've talked about this in other videos, but it's really nice to have a skincare brand that focuses on skincare come up with a primer because it serves as a really nice barrier to protect my skin from the not always fabulous ingredients in makeup. So let's get to sort of the beginning of my story, the, the, the quick synopsis. I am from New York City. I was born and raised in New York City. I'm from the Bronx. That is the borough I am from. I traveled a lot around the country for music. Went to see music all around the country. So I got to do two of my favorite things together, which was awesome, see live music and see the country. I think it's a good excuse. It was a really beautiful time in my life. And um, it was just a fun time. That That's another story, the, mu the musician side of my life. But it was a really fun way to see a lot of the country. And I have seen most states. I have about 12 or 13, something like that, I think states left to see which i plan on doing so next up is charlotte tilbury's flawless filter number six dark tan i'm kind of obsessed with this stuff i did a video on it i just like the instant glow it gives my skin so where were we so yeah so seeing your own country i think it was so important for me the first time i got on a plane as an adult was when i flew to vegas and for music and um had a panic attack because i hadn't been on a plane since i was a child so i was freaking out but it was a necessary step for me to continue to travel so yeah so travel your own country the united states is a it's a lot of things but one of the things positive things it is is a really beautiful country and it looks so different. So I always encourage people, even if it were, if it's a matter of money or what, if it's your next town, if it's your next city, if it's your next state, if it's across the country, just try to do different things. It just changes your perspective on the world and you get to see how other people live and you get to see how alike you are. Next up is our Magic Away, the brand new Magic Away liquid concealer. So excited to try this. Let's see what they say about this, that it's a full coverage liquid concealer and that they've been working on it for five years. Charlotte has been working on it for five years and wanted to reduce the appearance of dark circles, blemishes, and imperfections for a fresher looking second skin instantly. And what makes it so magical is that there's Persian silk tree bark extract that can contribute to the illusion of lifted upper eyelid as well as reducing the appearance of crow's feet when you're getting older, all about reducing these little signs of aging, reducing crow feet, crow's feet and fading dark circles. So there's a lot of other stuff. There's extract of wild indigo as a native Indian plant used to enhance the skin's luminosity. We're all about that. So there's a lot of stuff going on in this Magic Away liquid concealer. So... I'm excited to try it, so let's get into this now. And I have number 10, which is tan. And I do love the packaging that you can see the color that you're going to get here. And um, hopefully it lets us know when it's running low. You can get to get an idea. And then the applicator is just this nice little 
fuzzy situation here. And I guess I just turn it up until it gets to the top of the applicator. Okay, so this is the sound it makes. And as you can see, the concealer is starting to come out of the applicator. So I don't know how much, I guess I'll get a better feel for it once I use it, how much we need. So let's see. I'm just gonna use it under where I would normally use it. Under my eyes. I think this is a good match. It looks the same match as the NARS one that I use, which is kind of how I gauged what color to get. You know, trying to color match online is, is not easy. It's just not easy. So I'm gonna do what I would normally do. There's a piece of hair on my nose. Disrespectful. And I'm gonna I'm gonna use it like I would normally use it. My concealer. Okay. It's a it's very soft. The applicator is really quite soft. So this is a nice, a nice way to get it on. Put it on. They said blemishes. So let's try. I want to try a couple of little dark spots that I have on my face. Let's see what it does for those. So now I'm gonna blend this in and I'm gonna continue this chatty chat about travel. So while I was traveling around the country, I always knew that I wanted to uh, travel to Europe. Italy was always like my dream country that I wanted to visit. You know, and so that was the first place I, I traveled to a long time ago. I went to Rome, Venice, and we went to Paris. We went from Italy to France, so we went to Paris. That's where I spent my 27th birthday. That was my one goal for my 27th birthday, to go to the top of the um, Eiffel Tower, and that's what I did on my 27th birthday. So that was my first trip out the country. And it just completely like changed my mind. It got my mind going. I knew once I came back, I wanted to keep going and keep traveling and keep seeing new countries and new places. And travel just became this, this really, this great love of mine that I knew that I wanted to do for the rest of my life. I love finding out about different cultures and different people. I'm really liking this concealer a lot. And it's giving that luminosity. I like it. So now I'm just going to contour with Fenty Beauty's Truffle Matchsticks. So, yeah. So I got the travel bug internationally. And I knew it was not going to let up anytime soon. So I'd always wanted to move to Europe. This is a part about dreams. I'd always wanted to move to Europe. But I never envisioned doing it alone, ever. Okay, I always thought I needed someone else to do it. So I asked different friends, family members that were around my age, like, come on, do you wanna you wanna move to Europe? You wanna try moving to how cool would that be? So yeah, so my dream was deferred and around when I was gonna hit 30, I was like, This is ridiculous. This is something you've wanted all your life. You know, looking back on it, it feels almost like a different person because it's still hard for me to look back in a mat and, and believe that I took this leap. So I was gonna teach English. English has been a part of my life my whole life. My mother teaches English as a second language to uh, foreigners in America. So I'd, I'd grown up around English. English has always been a love of mine. So to me that felt like a natural way to go to another country was to use England, English. And um, so I took a course, I got certified to teach English as a foreign language. Then it came to which place I was gonna teach. I had never been to Spain, but I was drawn to Spain because of football. I love Real Madrid, so I knew a lot about Madrid and I thought that that's where I wanted to be. I wanted to be where my football club, wa club was. I was gonna go move to Madrid. But then I had a friend who was from Madrid and he said, Brie, you know, knowing you, I think your personality you might prefer Barcelona, a place I'd never considered, but he broke down the pros and cons of each, places, uh, of each place. And 
I eventually decided on Barcelona. So next up is Charlotte Tilbury's Genius Magic Powder. This is number three, dark. It says it's a revolutionary light diffusing loose powder for dark skin, which again, there are two other colors. I have the dark one with ingredients to help blur imperfections, visibly reduce the appearance of dark shadows and boost radiance for mattified, smoother looking skin. So here's the powder. You've got the holes here, shake, and then it comes out. So I'm gonna use my uh, beauty blender to blend this in and see. Let's see what we're working with. It's interesting because this truly, this color completely, so far, is blending in to my skin. So I guess if you're darker skinned, it's going to down the nose where it gets a little bit shiny. Let's get that T-zone, y'all. I really wanted to focus on the under eye, so let's get further up in the crease where, where I crease. That's going to be the test, Charlotte. How does this hold up where a sister creases? Not about those crease lines. So where was I? Barcelona, right? So I decided on Barcelona. Now, this is where things get interesting. I'd never been to Spain, which means I'd never been to Barcelona. Did not speak the language. They speak Catalan. You can. They can also speak Spanish. I wasn't really, new words in Spanish, but okay. So never been. Didn't know the language, didn't know anyone in Barcelona, didn't have a job there, didn't have a place to live. Okay, exciting. But I decided to go. So the goal, the, the idea was I was going to go there for a couple of months. Now I packed like I was coming home uh, soon. Um, and I didn't. So I went over there with the intention, listen, if I don't like it, I can go back home. My mom was with me for the first two weeks. Like I felt I wasn't that brave. It was crazy to me, but okay. So she went with me for the first two weeks. So we arrived there in time for New Year's Eve in Barcelona. So my plan was the first thing was to find some place to stay. Okay, now I knew I had to, it was going to be a room situation, not a um, whole apartment. Like the whole city is filled with people renting rooms. And I also felt it was a great way to get to know people. So that's a tip. If you're moving to a new place, don't try to get your own place. Don't try, try to get a room. Just It's just a really easy way to meet people and to meet people of other cultures. So that was the first step, yeah? So that was what I did first and in two to three days I believe I'd found a an apartment I was the first one in there so I chose the room with the balcon it's not a balcony it's a balcon like you can fit one foot out there okay so the day that my mom was leaving literally the day a girl came and rented the other room, a Swedish girl, and we are friends to this day. So my very first friend in Barcelona was Swedish, and that's my girl to this day. And so I had a built-in, like I said, this is why I encourage people, if you're planning on moving to a new place, it's just easier to get a room and make make instant friends. And then a little bit a little while longer a girl from Argentina moved in. So my first two buddies in the city, it was truly an international apartment. So then I had to get on to finding some sort of work, okay? I was there a couple of weeks and I said it's time to it's time to hustle. It's time to hustle. So in my mind I wanted to work at a school, okay? And I thought that would be nice. And it was just a lot of red tape with schools. And I don't know. It just, it didn't work out that way. Okay, it didn't work out. Then I decided at some point to try to do 
classes particulares. So like classes, one-on-one -on -one classes. That way I could control one how much I made and my schedule. This is completely out of my comfort zone. I am somebody who just, I mean, in my life or most of my life, I didn't want to do things alone. And this just kind of, I mean, it forced me. This is why I say that I grew up in Barcelona because I really did. I was a full grown adult when I went, but I really did feel like, I feel like I still feel like I, I grew up so much and learned so much about myself in Barcelona because didn't know the language, didn't know, like I said, didn't have a job, didn't have a place to live. I had to do all those things. So hustling for me meant putting up flyers, something as simple as putting up flyers. And then the people that I taught became friends because I wasn't in a school environment. That's another way, an easy way to make friends. I probably took the hardest route because I would have had built in friends and built in connections in a school but I chose to do it this way. So that meant for me that my friends were also my students and I'm friends with them to this day. So another thing, talk about being out of your comfort zone, language exchanges. This was, I went on a website and it was just that. You would sign up for what language you knew and what language you wanted help with. I mean, it was cool and it wasn't, it really, even when it was guys, it didn't have that datey kind of thing going on. People were genuinely trying to learn. Another huge tip. So if you're moving to a new country, even if you know the language, it doesn't even matter. It's such a great way to get out and meet people. This is way too dark. Holy Pat McGrath. Somebody's got to. Sorry y'all, gotta correct this on this side, there's a hot mess. So the flyers kept going up and it was so funny. Um, I put a flyer up in where I was living then. I, 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 I didn't stay in that first apartment for long. It was way too expensive. And when I tell you I lived all over Barcelona, I lived all over Barcelona. And the more I moved, the more stuff I got rid of. One of the best lessons I've learned living in Europe is all the things I can live without. Before, if I was home, I would never have believed. I don't need this. I don't need... I just accumulated stuff. And I think as an American, that's just easy to do because the stuff is all around us. And so I accumulated a lot of stuff. Living in Europe has shown me how much stuff I don't need. So I'm living in Gracia. Gracia is my absolute 100% favorite area of Barcelona. It reminded me of the village in New York. Barcelona reminds me of New York. Everybody was like, ha huh, how? It just reminds me of a smaller New York. Great public transportation system. You can get anywhere on foot within a half an hour on foot in Barcelona. You're in a completely different part of the city. Um, I started putting up flyers in Gracia when I was living there. I taught a girl who then introduced me to like everyone in her company. She's from Venezuela. That is my friend to this day. So I'm getting to know new people. I'm getting to know the area. One connection is leading to another connection is leading to another connection. One of the connections, one of the most important connections that I made, one of the most important decisions that I made in Barcelona early on was I, I decided I didn't just want to teach, uh, I didn't just want to teach adults. And what happened was I'd always taught kids or kids were some part of my world from when I was young. And I knew Homesick was one of those things that I didn't fully feel homesick. It took a while and then it was like, wow, it hits you. Months later, you're in this new country and you still, this is before I started really making friends and it's just, you, you felt it some days. And I thought that working with kids, that's really, I figured if I could work with kids, kids would lift my spirits up because I've always worked with kids in some capacity. And so I just felt like it was a good way to just lift my spirits up. I got to see people in a new way. And of course, it's going to change your perspective. Just, just little places change your perspective on the world. At one point, I lived with um, an African cousins who were African. And I forgot which country in Africa they were from. But I'm getting stories and, and they're telling me about their experience. And I can see the difference a passport makes that my experience as a black American 
was so foreign to their experience as Africans from African, darker than me. I mean, people approached me and, and would like tell me, no, you're not black. Like, they're black, you're not black. So, I mean, my view of the world began to change. What I was taught in America, what I was taught in school, I was like, hmm, you know, I, it, I'm being challenged. What, what I thought I knew is being challenged and nothing but good things can come from that. So Barcelona is a city that in my heart, I intend to go back to one day. I miss it all the time. It is my dream city. So I'm just gonna go in with Too Faced better than sex mascara. So the moral of the story is guys to leap, leap. If you're waiting on other people to, you know, be invested in your dreams, you're going to be waiting a really long time. We're not in on earth to live other people's dreams and that's not realistic to ask of other people. Other people can't live your dreams. Other people are not going to be as invested in your dreams for you than you are for you. So that's just the truth. I'm gonna jump in with Dior Backstage's face palette that I'm obsessed with. So I'm just gonna use the blush and the um, highlighter from the same palette. So that is really the moral of this particular story. You have to live, you have to. You have to live your own dreams. It's, it's just nobody else's deal too. And I'm such a much better person. I'm a much more open-minded person than I was before I took the leap. I just am. And I realized how strong I was in the process. And it took other people, other people always used to say, Brie, you're so brave. Just I still to this day, I don't think of it as brave. And I kept hearing it, you're so brave, you don't know, you're so brave because it, it, just, it just felt like something that I needed to do. It just felt like something that I had to do. And before I know it, before I knew it, I had a life. I had jobs, I had friends, I had uh, someone I was dating. I had, you know, favorite places to go. I had my favorite restaurants. I had my favorite bakery, my favorite supermarket. Things that seem really insignificant. But when you're taking a leap, you know, and you look back and it's like, yeah, okay. Yep, I did it. I did it. And I'm proud of myself for that. Because I don't know if I would do that today. I don't know that I would do that today, interestingly enough. I don't know that I would do that today because I wasn't I wasn't an adventurous person my whole life. If you knew me, I wasn't like, I would never use that word for myself. I wasn't adventurous. Like I said, I wasn't even trying to go to dinner alone. Never mind, move to another country. So it just wasn't me. So it, it, even thinking about it now, I always wonder, could you do that again now, girl? Could you Could you go back? Would you? It worked out for me. My story is unique. It's not going to work out that way. Like I said, maybe you're a person, it's easier for you to go into a school. Maybe that's where you should be. So I'm not discounting that. There's no one way to do this. This was just my way. And once I left Barcelona, I moved to Portugal. I moved back to Spain, to Granada, to Andalusia. So Southern Spain. And Southern Spain is where... I had the idea for my business, Breezy Tea. So travel, exploring, leaping, doing all those things is what, how I created my life. It started with just leaping. And I got a business out of it. I got my husband out of it. I got friends from around the world out of it to add to my collection of friends. I got the best souvenirs ever. ever. I got new perspectives. I've traveled more and I keep learning about new cultures, and it all started with me leaping. Let's top this all off with a little MAC Fix Plus Gold Light. Get my sparkle on, just get my sparkle on, and yeah, that's, that's really it. That's what I wanted to talk about today. I just wanna encourage you, if you've watched this whole video, to just take leaps, you never know what will come from it. And I'm a firm believer that everything is a lesson in life. So even if it doesn't work out the way you plan, you grow from it, you learn from it, take the lesson from from everything. You just don't know though, you, you don't know. And 
nothing i don't live with regret i do not live with regret i feel like because i learned from everything there's nothing really to regret i'm where i'm supposed to be in this moment and i didn't want to get to the end of my life the last thing i'm going to do is put on <laughs> lip liner but put on pat mcgrath who I told you i'm obsessed with i'm gonna put on her omi which was her lipstick for naomi campbell but um the the one thing you don't want to do in life is to get to the end of it and then think about all the things you wanted to do but didn't so yeah again even if it's the next town i love exploring america and when i visit i still see new things i like seeing new things i don't know there's still places i haven't seen why have i not been to new orleans yet why 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 have i not been to new orleans yet things like that mardi gras on my list of things to do still haven't been to texas so there there's there are a couple of states i still have to get to and let me tell you something if you're not on the pat mcgrath train these lipsticks are not like anything that i have ever felt on my lips it feels like suede Yes, she is expensive. She is a luxury brand. Her company did just pass the billion dollar mark. So excited. Black woman who I absolutely admire and look up to in this world of beauty. Uh, her stuff is, yeah, special. Absolutely special. And as you can see, I put it on once on my lips. This lipstick is the mother love and truth. One swipe, you're good to go. You are good to go. So I got this head together a little bit, somewhat. It's, it's, it's in a puff, which is my go-to look. It's gentle on my edges. The edges are so fragile. I'm not about that extra, you know, baby hair situation because I think Overdoing it is causing breakage to edges, and I'm not a baby. So that's the most important thing. I just think I'm at an age where they're not baby hairs anymore. So what are you doing? So yeah, but if you choose to do your edges with your baby hair, um, just be careful that you're not causing unnecessary breakage okay and when you put your hair up of course try not to stress your edges by pulling your hair too tight keep it keep it loose keep it fun use things that are not going to break your hair off and we're good to go so now this charlotte tilbury powder i'm absolutely i'm loving it i think it i think it did what i wanted to so it's like filled in some of the the hollowness it's it kept it it's like illuminated this area a bit. I really do like the concealer. The dark spots that I put it on are not showing up. And so this one a little bit more. Maybe needs a little bit more in that space. But it's doing what I wanted to do. So that is truly, truly, officially it for me, guys. And if you'd like to check out any of our Ankara and Satin Bonnets, our t-shirt hair towel wraps, full and hooded, our Satin Line beanies, and our Satin Line knit beanies, the cold is coming, our natural hair tees, and more, just visit us at BreezyTea.com. If you want to come hang out on social media, we are Breezy Tea Towels one on Instagram, and we're Breezy Tea Towels on Facebook and Twitter. See you guys in the next video where, who knows, maybe it'll be the new Pat McGrath video, who knows. Till next time, guys, ciao for now, bye. Thank you.